Nostalgic. Movie review. Nerdy. Married man. All right. Well, we are a go. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of New Nostalgic Movie Reviews. I am David. And I'm Steven. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, today we are looking at Steven's pick, Palm Springs. Yes. This is a 2020 film, rated R. It's an hour and a half long. And the synopsis is, uh, stuck in a time loop, two wedding guests develop a budding romance while living the same day over and over again. Yes, um, this movie stars Andy Samberg, uh, Kristen Milioti, J.K. Simmons, uh, Peter Gallagher, let's see, Meredith Hagner, and Tyler Hochelin, and Camilla Mendez. Those are the main people in it. There's a lot of minor, minor roles in this movie. It mainly, primarily sticks with, uh, I would say mainly just Andy Samberg and Kristen Milioti and J.K. Simmons in this movie. Those are the three main ones that you'll see throughout the entire movie. Even J.K. Simmons isn't in it as much as you think. Yeah. This movie is incredible. Um, It broke every record that Hulu had previously when this movie came out. The chemistry between the two leads is amazing. And for those of you who don't know, Kristen Milioti was actually the mother in How I Met Your Mother. Um, that's probably where most people know her from. And then, yeah, of course, Andy Samberg, you got Lonely Island, SNL, all those things. On well, I uh, I only knew Kristen from How I Met Your Mother. And honestly, I, I like her in this movie because she kind of gets to excel with more material. And I mean, she's just given more to do. Yeah. Like, and I think she nailed it. Oh, 100%. And then I know you mentioned Lonely Island, and actually this movie is a Lonely Island produced film. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, they actually uh, – it's Andy Samberg's company. Like the Lonely Island, they make a lot of feature films. Like they did Hot Rod and the Pop Star movie, and yep. this is another movie from their production team. Pop Star Never Stop Never Stopping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Both great movies. Phenomenal movies, honestly. Andy Samberg, I, I just love all of his movies. Um, this movie was shot in actually 21 days. It was kind of right beef. I think they shot it like right before the pandemic was really hitting. And then it was uh, just released directly to Hulu because of COVID. Um, and also to select drive-ins and stuff that were doing that, which was really awesome. Honestly, I, I never saw any promotional material commercials read anything about it i had no idea what this movie is, was about so i didn't realize it was going to be like a time loop movie mm-hmm. i mean it, it basically you know groundhog day or edge of tomorrow you know stuff like that yeah but th- i mean this movie it was good but i it it mainly just felt like a giant fever dream i swear this movie was just a, a little bit uh, weird it was great it was weird <laughs> i absolutely love this movie i think this movie dives into the mentality you would have being stuck in a time loop it doesn't ever say it in the movie um the director after the fact has come out and said that before the movie even starts that the main character is now andy sandberg was actually stuck in this time loop for 40 years before uh kristen Milioti's character gets brought into this which is insane. Reliving the same day, going to the same wedding for 40 years. <laughs> like that's got to like do crazy shit to your mental health. Like you've, he's got to be going insane. And I love the way that they play with that. And I love the conversations they have about that and how serious it gets. Cause it's something that's never really brought up in time loop movies. Like the only other one I've seen that really does that that well was happy death day where every time she wakes up, she gets more and more pissed off <laughs> and she starts like screaming at the beginning of the day. <laughs> well, I, I really like the way they approach the time loop thing, like how it shows that Niles has been living with it for such a long time. Whereas like normally in these movies, we're experiencing it for the first time through the main character. Mm-hmm. But this time it's cool seeing that Niles is already doing it. And we're kind of experiencing the first time thing through Sarah's character. Yeah. So I, just, I really liked to like catching up to speed through her. And it was, I don't know, like it, it continually surprised us rather than like just repeating the same day over and over in a mundane way. Like mm-hmm. it was, I, I think this movie is a ref- refreshing take on the concept of like a time loop movie. Well, and I kind of like that they kind of did it kind of like happy death day where they either go to sleep or they die. 
to start the next day. <laughs> That's so bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're killed at the beginning of the day, you restart the day. It doesn't play throughout the entire day still. And he even talks about that a lot throughout the movie where he's even talked about like, oh, well, sometimes if you die in like really slow, painful ways, like if you die in the ER, it's the worst thing you could ever experience because you have to be sitting there dying for hours while people are operating on you and knowing that you're just going to have to restart the day again afterwards. <laughs> and it's like, oh, man, that's like terrifying. Like, like Rough. But yeah. I, I really do like Niles and Sarah's like – they have a great dynamic and like chemistry together. And honestly, I feel like Niles's character has more depth than like a lot of Andy Samberg's other roles. And I, I like kind of experimenting with that. You know, Andy Samberg is really good at what he does in his mm. comedy, but this character has quite a bit of depth to it and it's it's refreshing. I like it. Besides knowing it's a time limit, going into this movie blind really helps this movie. Like, not knowing a lot of the big twists and stuff. Um, I also yeah. think that for this movie, subsequent rewatches really help this, too. Because you start catching a lot of the, the subtle things that you didn't notice. Like, even, like, one of the first scenes, he's, like, walking through a dance floor at this wedding. And the way he perfectly moves to dodge everyone and not touch anyone and to drink out of someone's drink and to, like, like spin and dance with this person and to, like, pull a chair out for this person and do this. And then he even, like, at one point during that scene says, like, today, tomorrow, yesterday, it's all the same thing. And I laughed at that watching it the second time because I was like, oh, my gosh, he literally <laughs> says, like, I'm in a time loop. It's all the same. Who cares? Without saying <laughs> it at the beginning. And I'm like, man, that's that's hilarious. Yeah, so I guess uh, before we move on to spoilers and get too much into it, I guess how would you rate this film? This one for me is a at least a must-watch, must-rent. Um, for me, I'm going to buy this movie. I know this probably isn't a movie that everyone's going to probably want to buy. I don't know if I'd recommend this movie to everybody, but this is a movie that if you enjoy the kind of time loop kind of movies and you like enjoy dark comedies and kind of like dark... I guess it's like a dark rom-com, basically, which is kind of a genre I've never really heard of before, <laughs> a dark comedy rom-com. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it's kind of what it is, and I really enjoy that. I love all of Andy Samberg's movies, and I think the chemistry of these two main characters, like I said, is just perfect. So I think this is a must-buy, but I, I definitely think for the majority of people, you should at least watch it. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd say it's definitely worth the stream. And if you don't have Hulu, I think it is worth the subscription to Hulu just to watch this movie. It's it's worth it. It's a really fun time. And I don't know. It's it's enjoyable. It's endearing. Yeah. Um, it does have a lot of very real things in it. And it does have some triggering things. There is a lot of talks about suicide. There is suicide attempts in this movie. Um, there is a lot of like, really, like I said, this is a dark comedy. This is very, very dark and they get really real with decently graphic with some of the death scenes and stuff. Like I, I wouldn't say for the faint of heart, watch this movie if you are like really against a lot of that stuff. Sorry. I like to always put those trigger warnings in there, especially with like stuff with like suicide. I know that's such a hard thing for a lot of people and even having to deal with someone who committed suicide in my life not too long ago. It's a really hard thing to even like. Every time I like see these things, I'm like, oh, man, this is really hard for some people. And some people I've had conversations with like, yeah, I, I hate even hearing the word suicide after my friend committed suicide. And I'm like, I get that. So uh, I guess uh, with that, we could move on to the spoilers. Yes. Do, we, do we know what we're doing next time? Uh, next time was Dungeons and Dragons, I believe. Dungeons and Dragons. Checking out. So uh, we'll see you next week with that. And now on to the spoilers. <laughs> this movie man it starts out in like one of the weirdest and funniest ways where like andy samberg wakes up and his girlfriend's getting ready and you can tell like they have a really bad relationship really toxic relationship right away and he d she doesn't really like care about what he wants and he's like asking for like sex first thing in the morning and she's like well you can just jerk off while i get ready and then she can't find the ring that she's wanting to where so she's just in there shit 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 and he's like i can't jerk off to this <laughs> 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 i'm like what the hell is this movie it's it's a weird opening <laughs> it's very very weird 
Um, but then, yeah, of course, we get him like going out into the dance floor, and we see like some of the, like the first uh, speeches and stuff, and we get uh, the bridesmaid speech was just absolutely terrible. And then uh, they're asking the uh, bride's sister to give a speech, and she didn't know she was going to have to, which is Sarah's character. And Andy Samberg comes in and steals the limelight and like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll save you. You're drunk and you can't do this right now. I'll just – I've said uh, thousands of these speeches probably by now, so I'll just go in here and say this speech for you. And does this really amazing speech, actually. It's, it's really, really endearing. <laughs> Yeah, he actually ends up saying this speech and catching the attention of Sarah and speaking to her afterwards. And I don't know, setting up like this little kind of spark of a romance there. Which I love. There's a scene afterwards where the uh, one of the family members, like the grandmothers or something, comes by and she goes, I've been to more weddings than you could ever imagine. And then under his breath, he's like, You'd be surprised. <laughs> and that was the best speech I've ever heard. And I, just, I love that so much that like there's so many of those like tiny subtle things, like I said, where he's just like, you'd be surprised because he's been to this wedding for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so after that, they, since I didn't know what this movie was about, kind of threw me through a loop because it just seemed like a regular rom-com. Mm-hmm. But he ends up taking Sarah out into the desert and they, you know, making out and starting to get a little frisky and whatnot. And out of nowhere, <laughs> <laughs> Niles gets hit in the back with an arrow or a leg. The yeah, leg. I, th- I think it's the either the back or like the shoulder blade or something at first and then the leg or vice and then versa. The he gets shot with an arrow and that's when J.K. Simmons' character comes. He's like hunting him down and I'm like, wait, what is happening? It's such a weird well, turn. And, and she does so perfect in this scene with her reaction. She's, as soon as the first arrow hit, Andy Samberg has no reaction. He's just like, oh, fuck, not again. <laughs> and she's just like, what the fuck is going on? What the fuck? <laughs> and she's freaking the fuck out. And he just starts, like, running away from her <laughs> and trying to get to this, like, cave. And you have no idea why he's trying to get to this, like, cave place. And you see J.K. Simmons, like, chasing him. And then all of a sudden, like, she starts to chase. And they both... J.K. Simmons goes into the cave and like a bunch of like weird like orange lights and stuff coming on. And she's like, what is happening? And she sees him like crawling on the ground towards the back of the cave. And she's like, do you need help? He's like, no, no, leave, please. Just seriously, don't come near me. You do not want to come near me. Stay away. But she's like, you're bleeding. You're dying. You're crawling on the floor. You have three or two or three arrows in you at the moment. Like you need help. Being the nice person, she goes to go help, and then she goes too far into the cave, and that's what traps her also in this time loop. And she wakes up the next day so confused because it started the next day over, and she's like, wait, I already did this day. What is happening? Yeah, it's that's when it starts craziness. <laughs> I love this scene so much because he's going through his normal routine, and then she just comes out of nowhere and starts chucking beers and i'm like what the hell did you do to me what is happening and he's in the pool and he's like oh god what's that <laughs> she's just hilarious in this film oh like, yeah I, I love how she and Niles kind of play off of each other like every scene kind of feels carried by their witty dialogue and their chemistry mm-hmm. but uh yeah he ends up taking her to a, i guess a bar to explain everything yeah some like diner that's like a ways away from the wedding or whatever he's explaining to her everything that's going on and like i tried to tell you not to follow me but you know because she's blaming him it's his fault and i mean it kind of is but he's like i tried to warn you Mm -hmm. and so he explains everything about the time loop and what the deal with it is and she doesn't believe it she's like you know I'm going to leave. And he said, well, don't fall asleep because it's going to happen again. She ends up falling asleep and waking up. And, but she ends up, uh, after that driving to her home in Texas. Yes. Right. Cause they're in, uh, Mexico. Yeah. It's like Palomita or something like that. I can't, I can't remember where they're at, but so she ends up driving home and is like, I'm not going to fall asleep. And she falls asleep in Texas, wakes up and it's the morning of the wedding again. And she's in her, the bed of the, at the resort. And so she talks to him about 
you know, have you ever tried killing yourself? And he's like, I've killed myself more times than you can imagine. And it's it's just crazy how they get into that. There's also that scene where he shows her the cave again. And I love it because at a certain time every night, the cave reveals itself and he's gotten it down to the T of when that happens. So he's like, stands up on this rock. He's like, wait for it. And then he puts out his arm and he's like, I am the antichrist. And then the cave opens and she's like, what the, and an earthquake happens. She's like, what the hell? And he's like, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I have no idea what that cave is. It just appears and it appears at this time every night. And that's how we start the loop back. And that's how I got caught in it. Mm-hmm. And then they start one of my favorite scenes in the movie is coming up where like makes this montage of them just messing around having a good time and like they have this choreographed dance what is it, mm-hmm. in the bar and dressed at like in like 50s or 80s i don't remember but they're dancing having a good time and then like during the montage it also shows them uh they save the wedding because she says there's a bomb and he <laughs> pulls a bomb out of the cake and throws it up and shoots it with a crossbow and <laughs> I it's, love that scene so much. It's such a ridiculous montage, but I love how it shows the development of the lead characters and their relationship and like driving the plot forward. It's it's really creative because if you were stuck in a time loop, you would have to do something to keep it from being the same thing every time. And then I love the conversation because she's like, well, have you? how many people have you slept with? He's like, oh, pretty much everyone here. He's like, I slept with this person. I slept with this person. I slept with that guy. And she's like, you slept with that guy? And he's like, did you fuck him? He's like, no, he fucked me. He was really, gen- really gentle, actually, <laughs> or something like that. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, that's so funny. And then he's like, yeah, I even had sex with your dad. And he's and she's like, what? And then it shows this like fake scene of him like flirting with her dad. And it's hilarious. But he's like, nah, just kidding. I didn't actually sleep with your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I love how with the time loop, it's treated as both a positive and a negative. Yeah. Like the negative, of course, is they're stuck and they're in this situation. But I guess I love the positive points for both characters. They have a lot of great development, but mainly for Sarah because she comes to term with who she is and she grows from it. Like she realizes that she has kind of made a shitty mistake before the time loop. Mm -hmm. And she just realizes she's not a great person, but she comes to term with it. And that was such a great twist because that wasn't alluded to at all. I felt like Mm -hmm. we have all these scenes and we have all these things. And Niles like even says like, this is the first time they've been together. And he's like, really liking that she's here. And throughout this entire time too, she also explains, or like there's been a couple other times where JK Simmons comes to try to kill him. And he said that then they show a little montage of it, but like they did cocaine together one time at the wedding. Cause he was like a uncle of somebody and uh, they ended up going into the thing together on accident. And JK Simmons blames him for trapping him in this loop. So that's why he tries to kill him all the time. Yeah. Cause he's stuck as well. And, but uh, I guess I love at some point they get into a fight because she actually, you know, uh, J.K. Simmons character comes up and pulls them over in a cop car mm-hmm. and is going to, like, get Niles. And Sarah decides to mess with the cop and kills him, runs into him with the car. And, of course, that resets his loop. But the one thing that Niles butts in and says, like, we don't do that because he's like, it doesn't matter if the loop resets. You have to live with knowing the fact that you put someone through pain, you killed someone. And it's yeah. just this really cool realization, like, wow, he he really cares about mankind, even though he's stuck in this time loop. Like, Well, and I mean, because, like, especially with resetting the day, like, if you killed someone, you have to look that person in the eye in the next day. Yeah. And that's so disheartening. And the way he talks about that is so amazing. And honestly, it's at this point, too, because she sandwiched him between two cars. There's a scene after that where Niles actually goes to go find him and finds Roy. He's at his house and with his kids and stuff. He's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, you're not going to like kill me or anything? And he's like, no. He's like, actually, when your little girlfriend hit me with that car, I actually, I, it was a really long and painful death in the ICU. And I realized at that point of how much pain I've put you through. And I realized how awful it was. And then he also realized, like, you know, you kind of did something for me where 
I, I, I still hate that I'm trapped here, but to the same extent, I get to watch my kids and my wife every day at the same age, the same way they are forever. And he finds a beauty in it after his almost like his slow death experience. And it's, it's really touching and it's like really crazy. And then we get a funny moment here where uh, he's like, all right, you need to leave now though. And he's like, well, I don't want to walk all the way back or have to pay for a cab or anything. Can you just kill me? So I wake up back at home, and save the trip. Roll time <laughs> safe. <laughs> And he stands inside of a recycling bin. Yeah. <laughs> Shoots him with a crossbow. <laughs> so good. But I, I do love that scene because he points over to uh, his daughter in their backyard. And he's like, she's going to draw a picture of me later today, like a family portrait. And mm-hmm. it's it's beautiful. I can't wait for that. Yeah. It's just really heartwarming. But uh, I guess before all this happens, when he goes to visit Roy, that same scene, Niles lets it slip um, oh, yeah. that he has slept with Sarah before. And when she asked him about all his sexual partners before, he said that they never slept together. Mm-hmm. And he actually lets it slip there. Like, you know, I, I shouldn't have done this, but he cares about it. Like, he, he loves her. Yeah, like, he actually is falling for her now that they're mm-hmm. actually spending time together. Because before it was a way for him to get human interaction. It was a way for him to deal with his situation, using all these people to satisfy his own needs. And then when she got trapped in the loop with him, he really realized how much he actually like cares about her and didn't want to hurt her anymore. And that's why he opens up about it to her. And she doesn't take it well. And there's, there's a couple of times in this movie where you're wondering like why she gets so upset about certain things and why she's reacting so harshly about certain things and why she's trying to get out of this loop way harder than he is because he's like, he gets to a point where he's like completely content now. Like him and Roy are at this place now where they're like, ah, bliss life. I have the people that I love near me and that's all I care about. And that's all I need. I don't need to move on with my life. I don't need to go to work. I don't need to do this. I have my my family. I have my loved ones. And that's all that there is in this world. And she is just like, I need to get the fuck out of here. Get me out. Yeah, so I guess after that, she runs away. She ends up killing herself um, to reset her day and just disappears. Uh, Niles can't find her anywhere. So every day he wakes up, he tries to find her and it's just weird, but it turns out she left to go learn quantum physics <laughs> I love to this. maybe to maybe figure out how to get out of this time loop. And it's just it's it, it's quite funny. But uh, I guess Niles, yeah, he, he likes his loop because, you know, he fears the real world and he also doesn't want to lose Sarah like he loves her and wants to spend his life with her. There's also times in this where she's even like trying to get to know him better at one point and she's bringing up all these conversations like, hey, like uh, we got to get to know each other. Like, what did you do to, for work before here? And he's like, I I honestly don't know. And she's like, you're lying. And he's like, no, really, I've been in this loop for so long. I don't remember what I did before this. Mm-hmm. And being there for 40 years, I can completely understand that. Not remembering what you like, because you've been doing the same thing over and over again and not having to do anything for work, not having to do anything for money or food. Like you could do anything you wanted to. You could have sex with anyone you wanted to, drink as much as you wanted to. You could kill yourself as much as you wanted. Nothing's going to change the, your predicament. He's done anything and everything that he could possibly do. <laughs> yeah, I, I would completely understand that. And it's just crazy to me, but. Yeah, her doing the quantum physics, I love this scene because it's showing her like every day researching more and more. And she's even like uh, FaceTiming like scientists and astrophysicists and all this other stuff. And he's uh, she's like, I have a question for you. And like one time on one of the Zoom calls, the guy's like, it uh, sounds like you actually have all that information. And she figures out how to possibly break the loop. <laughs> yeah. And I guess I love when she's gone, it kind of forces niles to confront his feelings and like realize what he really wants and so he ends up deciding you know he wants to be with sarah no matter what and she confronts him saying i think i solved it and he realizes you know what i would rather be with you and possibly die than to live in this loop forever without you because she realized that they can possibly wall into 
entering the portal, blow themselves up and destroy the portal, mm-hmm. and it'll set them free. Which is just crazy idea. And she tries it with a goat at first, which is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and she says, I, I never found the goat. I think I solved it. You know, he blew him up. I, I never found him or his carcass, like nothing. He, you know, at first, he's Niles is against it, but he ends up deciding, like I said, he gives this really heartfelt speech that basically he wants to live every moment he can with her instead of living the loop without her. So he's like, you know what, either we're going to blow up and die right now, mm-hmm. or we're going to make it out. Either way, I get to be with you in my last moment. Yeah. One of the things, the, the last two lines of his really long speech, cause she's like, you get one sentence to try to win me back. And he does a run on sentence with a lot of commas and stuff. And he's like, uh, I'd rather die with you than live in this world without you. So let's see if we blow up and die. <laughs> I just, yeah. like, I love that. <laughs> yeah, and she brings up like that is the most grammatically incorrect sentence I've ever heard because he used commas, semicolons, colons, like everything he could to make this whole paragraph speech into one sentence. <laughs> yeah, every time he'd say semicolon. <laughs> this leads to, I think, such an amazing climax. It's good. Like it, it shows them right in front of the portal. They like, give each other like a last kiss and while they're kissing they hit the button to these explosives that are strapped to their chests not knowing if their plan's gonna work to set them free or kill them and it's just like it's it's really well shot scene well especially because right before this um so this last day because she had planned for it to be her last day she tried to have the most perfect day she could. She actually gave the best speech that she could for her sister and felt how heartfelt it was. Oh, and we didn't mention either. The big twist um, that was really dark in this movie was that she had actually, the day before the wedding, slept with the groom <laughs> who was her, her sister's fiance. Yeah. Yeah. So- Every morning she woke up, she would wake up in the groom's room in that bed from having slept with him the night before. And that's the main reason she wanted to get out Mm. because she hated reliving the moment that she made that mistake. Well, and even as happy as she was getting with Andy Samberg or Niles in the movie, she would wake up that morning and just feel immediately like a shitty person again. And you see that once you actually get that twist and you're like, wow like Damn. that was not something i expected we also didn't bring up the dinosaurs but it's a fun little thing that people try to try to figure it out <laughs> yeah there's this point what during the montage of everything they're doing that they're sitting around a campfire eating dinner and stuff near the portal and then suddenly you see some like a bunch of dinosaurs walking by what like long necks or whatever they're called yeah, brontosaurus Ah, uh, they're long necks from Lambie uh, yeah, Time. Yeah, exactly. Before time. <laughs> Little foot. <laughs> but uh, it's it's the most bizarre thing, and I guess... Uh, they were on acid during that one. Were they on drugs? Okay. Like, I didn't realize, because you, like, you see these dinosaurs, and they're pointing it out, and I'm like, what? It's the most bizarre thing, and I'm like, well, maybe the portal's like some weird thing, but... The reason why I I don't know if I agree with the whole drugs thing is because at the end of the movie, they've survived the time loop. They're now living their lives together and being together. But then before the end credits, in the background of the desert, it zooms out and you see the dinosaurs walking by. And I'm like, wait, so were they real or not? (laughs) See, and that's the thing, because like... I thought it was completely a drug thing because he even said, like, I think it's the acid is why we're seeing the dinosaurs at first. I think that's some somewhere along the lines of the line he says. And then at the end of the movie, I was like, but wait, that why they're not on drugs now. Like, why is it? Why is it happening now? That's the weird part. And so that's where I'm wondering, like, if some sort of like time dilation because of the time loop, they are able to somehow like see visions of the past or I don't even know. That's just my know, but brain. The the dinosaurs at the end, let's say the dinosaurs were also caught in a time loop. By blowing up the portal, maybe it's possible that the dinosaurs are now in our time <laughs> Ooh. just walking around the desert in the background. That'd be funny. It's only like three or four of those brontosaurus or whatever. So Speaking of possible others in the time loop, my second time watching this, I at, at the end of the movie, there's a point where... Uh, that Nana that said that he had a good speech, 
says something that where I was like, wait, was she also trapped in the loop? Because it seemed like she knew that they were both doing the day over again or something. Like there was something that she said. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but oh. I was like, wait, is she part of the loop too? Cause that would be interesting. Like more people were trapped in the loop, but they didn't know. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't really even think about that. I just thought it was the three of them that were stuck in the loop, but uh, it's it's a really good ending to the story mm-hmm. because, you know, they both decide to live their lives and deal with who they are and they grew from that experience. And yeah. I just it's it's a really good, unique time loop rom com. Oh yeah. It it's such a bizarre movie. I put this movie in the same like ropes as like a, a spontaneous like it's kind of that kind of a movie where it has a lot of like serious undertones, but a lot of like really good comedy, but really good romance and touching love story and stuff too. But in this weird world where everything is so bizarre and no one has an explanation for anything. And yeah. that's one of the things that I kind of love about that movie and this movie is they are just that entirely. They're just so unique. Like I've never seen a movie like this. I've never seen time loops done this way. And I I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy the way they did it. Yeah, it was really fun movie. So I would I would definitely say it's worth a watch. And probably by far Andy Samberg's most serious role ever. Because even though he has a lot of comedic moments in this, the way he does his comedy, it just feels more natural. It's not like... Because like in movies like Hot Rod, he's very much acting like a very a dumb goofball. character, like a goofball. Same with pop star never stop never stopping that feels very lonely island it feels like yeah. an snl sketch this felt like him actually acting in a movie well like his comedy like he's he's really good at comedy but like even in the funny moments like you can feel the real person that is behind those mm-hmm. funny lines like the sadness and everything that's going on like it's yeah i don't know yeah yeah i think you're right it's one of the deeper roles i've seen him in i mean i'm sure he's done a lot of other stuff but I mean, I've only ever seen a few of his things, but, and I mean, I enjoy him a lot. I know there's one other rom-com that he's in and I just got it recently. Oh, I know he was in that. That's my boy with Adam Sandler, but there was also another one. I think it's like Celeste and something. Either way, go check out Palm Springs. Great movie. Well, I think that's pretty much everything I have for this one. So I guess we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.